Hey, how's it going? I'm Derek Kirk of Effectatron, and today we're going to learn to create this stylized cartoon shading shader inside of Redshift that gives it this really cool 2D look that's going to actually kind of set up in a way that's going to work with your light with some limitations. Now, I'm going to start off and just from the start, be very clear that this is not true cell shading like Sketch and Tune does where it reacts with whatever light you put in there and it does the stepping like that. But it is a cool effect that allows you to actually create that stepping look and have it react to your light with some limitations inside of Redshift. Redshift does not support Sketch and Tune yet. I really hope they implement that soon because it is just a really cool look. Also, I have 25 pre-built presets that are drag and drop ready available for download on Gumroad. So if you want those, be sure to check the description below and click that link. It means a lot to, to get that support from you guys. You guys have been super supportive. Thank you so much for all of that. So all you gotta do is, you know, a couple of examples of these, we'll just drag and drop them on. And we have this really nice, cool, stylized mech just like that. We also can do just sort of basic black, gray, white, things like that, as well as just some other cool ones that you can throw on there just that are stylized. Be sure to check out DerekKirk.net for all of my 3D training content. There's courses, there's individual tutorials, there's downloadable scenes, there's tons of materials available for download on my Gumroad as well. All of that is available at DerekKirk.net, so be sure to check that out. Thank you for all the support, and uh, all right, let's get back into the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is create a redshift material, standard material, which if you notice is now up here at the top and not down at the bottom, which is nice. So we've got our redshift standard material. We're gonna throw this on our mech here. And you can see, we just have this nice gray material. We're gonna double click that. And you might notice that my, you know, previews are not updated and that's because I have my preview set to not update while I have IPR on. That way I get a faster response time. Okay, so I'm not really too worried about these looking correct because I'm going to be looking at them on here anyway. So you set that up in the preferences, by the way, as if you need to do that. So basically it's called previews are only updated when rendering is idle. So we're going to need to add some things to this, actually only two things, and we're going to be able to create this look very simply. So the first thing we need to do is add a Fresnel. So the Fresnel is this really cool node that kind of allows you to kind of capture the curvature of things, not so much like curvature does where you get like those hard edges, but more like the fall off of the way light wraps around stuff, kind of like if car paint and stuff like that. It's a very Fresnel style reflection where you get those different, that bend of light around an object. So let's go ahead and hit S on this Fresnel and we'll take a look at what this is doing on our object. So you can see we have black with a little bit of white on the outside. By default, use index of refraction is on for the Fresnel, and you can definitely use that, which means whatever you type in here, the curve fall off, none of that's gonna matter because it's not using that. What it's using is the IOR value down here, and for me, it just makes a lot more sense for me to use curve fall off than IOR because I can just kind of unwrap my head around those values a little better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say uncheck use index of refraction, and we're gonna be left with just using this curve fall off. So the default at five, you can see what we've got is we've got our facing color is black. So you see most of our object is black and our perpendicular color is white. So everything that's kind of perpendicular to the camera is kind of getting that white value. So you can see we've got black and then white on the edges and we want the opposite of that. We want white with black edges. So what we need to do is obviously swap these colors. So click and drag this white down to the black and then make this black right here. So now you can see we've got white and then a little black around the edges. Now, obviously this doesn't quite look right yet, but what we need to do is adjust the curve fall off. So we've got a value of five. If we take that value down to like 0.35, we're gonna start really clamping down and get a lot more of that perpendicular value versus the facing value. So it's gonna take a lot less for the object to get that perpendicular color applied to it, which is what we want to get those nice hard edges. But let's say we wanted to, you know, say 10 and make it higher, we'd get less of that perpendicular color. So hopefully you understand, like in my head that makes sense. Lower value, more perpendicular color, higher value, more perp less perpendicular color, right? Rather than the IOR being a certain value. Okay, so 0.35, we like this. All right, so now obviously this doesn't look great. What we need to do is add, 
one more node, which is a ramp node. And we're going to use this to clamp that and create that kind of step shading that we see here where it goes straight from black to gray to white or straight from black to white or whatever you want. So we need to hit C and type in ramp, drag and drop that in. And we're going to click our Fresnel into a ramp input, alt input. And then we're going to solo this ramp and so we can see what this is doing. So already you can see it's a little darker and it's kind of increased that a little bit. But what we need to do is right click in here inside of our little ramp here and go to interpolation of all knots and switch that to step. And what that's going to do is that's going to create that hard cutoff point, that finite angle. So we can grab that white slider and bring it down. And now you see we have black and white and there's just there's no fall off in between the two or anything. It is a straight chop step so we can kind of slide that up and slide that down. So you can really adjust the amount of that perpendicular color even more with this. So now that we have more of it available, we can really clamp and fine tune that down how we want. So this is looking pretty good. So what we could do is we could bring this white up and click somewhere down in here, double click and create kind of a light gray. And so now we're going to get that step from black to gray to white and we can clamp that, bring that white up to bring up more white. There you go. So now you kind of have this cool boom, 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 fall off between these three things, right? And you can adjust the colors. You know, you can make this a little less of an intense gray and you could do blue, whatever colors you want. You could do, you know, cool green shadings for grass blades or something like that. Anyway, so we've got this setup, which is looking pretty cool, but it's still not, you know, finite. We don't have this plugged into our material. So let's grab our ramp, plug this into the color, the base color, unsolo it, and we'll take a look at it. And... That's pretty cool looking. That's a cool cell shading look, but we're still getting a lot of re reflections and shadows and stuff on there. So this is one look that's pretty good, but it looks more 3D still than it does look 2D. So stylistically, you could totally go for this. You could come in here and you could lower the, take the reflections off. And that's gonna help it look a little more 2D right off the bat. And that looks pretty good, but one more thing you could do to really amp it up and make it look even more cartoony is actually take this ramp Plug it into the RS material, just drag and drop it onto the shape here and go down to base properties, emission, color, and then go into there and we'll have to scroll down here and go to emission and crank that up to one. And what that's going to do is that's going to use that ramp to actually emit from the surface of our object. So now we're not going to get those shadows and stuff um, really falling on our object because our object is light and it's hard to put shadow on a light. So now we have a pure, you know, very clear cartoony look we don't have like the shading and contours of the 3d shadows and gi and stuff like that so we just have a pure cartoony look which is pretty cool and the cool thing is and i'll show you how to do this in a second is we've got it set up in a way that as we rotate our camera around you'll see that the shading actually follows it but not only the shading follows it the shadows follow it as well so let's let me undo this real quick well actually let me show you how I set this up really quick. And so how I did this is infinite light. It says area light, but I switched it to an infinite light. And I have both my camera and my area light using a target tag to a null object, right? And this null object is just in the middle of my scene. So both the infinite light and the camera are looking at the same point. And then I put the infinite light inside of my camera as a child of my camera. So now wherever I move my camera around, the light's going to go with it. And that's going to match the shadows. Now you might ask, why would I do that? And I'll show you why in just a second. So what we can do is if we take this infinite light out of our camera, right? So we've got our shadow coming in this way, as you can see in our lighting, it looks like it matches. We've got white on the side and black kind of on the dark side. So right now our Fresnel is working with our light shading and it looks accurate. But if I turn the camera now without my light being involved, You'll see that the shadow is still coming in this way, but it's not quite matching appropriately anymore. So I can look in the back side of my object is where it's very clear and you'll see we still have the white and then the black. So the way the Fresnel works is it's very camera based. It's not light based. So it's going to always kind of have the side facing the camera is going to be light and it's going to fall off that way. Now you could invert your ramp if you know, you know, you could adjust it manually while you're rotating your camera around and that would be kind of tricky. 
But the main thing, the easiest thing to do to make it look accurate all the time is going to be to just put that infinite light inside of your camera so it's always going to match. So obviously that makes this a lot more useful for stills than it does for animation and stuff like that. Is my light. So now with our light back inside, you'll see if I go to the back side of the camera here, you'll see it makes sense with the white being back here because now our shadow is back there. So visually, it makes sense. So if you're, as long as you're doing stills, this is going to be a great way to set that up. So one really cool thing, last thing before I show you how to add some texture and stuff to this, is the neat thing with this being in Redshift and stuff rather than Sketch and Tune is that Redshift depth of field still works with this. So it's kind of a really cool, interesting look. We could come in here and just focus on this right here and we get that really cool like boom clean cartoony look but also have this nice fall off so really cool you could do like a rack focus from one thing to the other which would be pretty hard to achieve uh any other way so it's a really a cool just neat stylized look now if you take a look at this sphere down here you'll notice that the edges of it look kind of like a graphite pencil drawing so i'll show you really quick uh how to add texture to this as well so real quick to create this sort of sketch look, one easy thing we could do is go into our content browser here, type in imperfections, and down here at the bottom there's one called sketch, which is pretty useful. Drag and drop in that sketch, and we're gonna isolate that on our object and just take a look at how that's being applied to our material. So now you can play around with the UV mapping of this. You can change it to spherical or sometimes that looks better. But what we need to do mainly is we need to come down here inside of our texture node here, go down to the scale remap, and we're going to type in 10 and then 50. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to make it a lot smaller and then stretch it because we want it to look kind of like a stretched out sketchy line. So then what we need to do is scroll back up and go to the custom gamma. And we're going to type in 3. And what that's going to do is that's just going to make it more intense and more dark. And so now we can see that a little clearer. So what we want to do now is grab this texture node, plug it into the Fresnel, fall off color, perpendicular color. And unsolo that. And voila, we have kind of that nice edge look on wherever our black was is now going to have that sort of a sketchy look. And obviously you could come in here with a ramp and control this a little more than the gamma. Uh, but let's go ahead and increase our gamma to five just to make it a little more intense. There we go. And then again, you can play around with the Fresnel or just the ramp in general and sort of bring these back up to bring more of that shaded look in there if we need to. There we go. So now we have this cool kind of grungy shaded material look on our object here. So let's go ahead and just turn off the depth of field and take a look at this from a little further out. Yeah, so now we have this cool stylized sketch look that looks like it's got this nice sketchy vibe going on to it. And if we think that the fall off is a little too much, obviously we could come in here to the curve fall off and adjust that. You have complete control over how these edges and stuff are looking. So pretty cool little trick to add some texture and stuff. But honestly, to me, I like the clean edges. I think that looks really cool. And so obviously uh, we can unhook our texture here just to create those clean edges once again. And if you wanted to color this, you simply color the ramp. So if you want to do like a red, red and then sort of a lighter red and then a white you know obviously we could have this kind of look right here we could do even even lighter pink so we have kind of this step shading between a uh, color and stuff like that so pretty cool way to create just this really interesting kind of vibe your shader done don't forget to just go into the content browser and drag and drop that in and we're going to put it in this category of materials redshift. And we're going to call it tune. Okay. And there we go. Now we have a tune shader built in to our content browser. All right. So just be mindful that when you take this and apply this to other objects, the scale of the object and stuff matters. So it may require a little tweaking between um, the ramp and the Fresnel values, but for the most part, they should work pretty well. Really cool, instant way to get a cool cartoony look. We could take our floor here and add, um, you know, a flawless reflection. We can make it black. 
and we have this cartoony look on a 3D reflective floor, which is kind of an interesting vibe. Pretty cool. But yeah, pretty neat. All right, thanks for watching so much. Uh, be sure to check out DerekKirk.net again. And let's take a look at this week's uh, weekly challenge. Um, design this, this week's weekly design prompt was candy, obviously, for Halloween reasons. And so here are the some of the things that people made. Again, you guys have been amazing in the Discord. It's super fun to have just a community of just like-minded artists and stuff. As far as like-minded, you have to share the same passion, right? And everybody has their own story and different struggles and everything, and they can talk about it openly and freely. It's a very like safe place to just feel comfortable and talk about, well, this is how do I, how the hell do I do this and not feel stupid, right? Because there's 3D is hard. Okay, so if you want to be a part of a community that's just kind of friendly and helping each other out and everybody's on this journey together, be sure to join the Discord. All right, thank you guys so much. See you next time.